So he's going to be loyal to you if you do, if he does all of these things and you're going to want to sit back and listen to every single one of what I'm about to share, because this radically predicts relationship success. Now, recently in a video, I think it was a couple videos ago, I shared the story of what I thought was the perfect couple. And it turns out he'd been cheating on her for over a year. They'd been together for seven and a half years. They'd lived together, I believe, five and a half to six years. And I met them. I thought, honestly, they were the perfect couple. Um, these are person people that met in their 50s, uh, one another. And and. And I, and I spoke to her about what happened. And she said, Jonathan, what you saw on the outside behind closed doors, we were the perfect couple. And from her perspective, there weren't any clues to determine this, this was going to happen. But what I shared in the video that there were a few clues there, but they were so subtle that she wasn't able to pick up on them. And we're going to talk about this today because when all these things I'm about to share are radically important to determine a man's capacity or a woman's capacity to be fully loyal in a relationship. That's interesting because I went to a wedding uh, two years ago. God, or, excuse me, last year, a year and a half ago, excuse me. And, and I do believe this is a perfect couple now. I happen to know them personally. And I spoke to them about what I'm about to share in the past. I've spoken to him about this. And it seems like he checks all the boxes. So if you've ever heard the phrase in real estate, what's the most important thing in real estate? You might have heard location, location, location. Location, location, location. Well, what for loyalty in a relationship, we're going to use that same analogy. What's most important in, for loyalty in a relationship is character, character, character. A person's character and what makes up their character is radically important to relationship success. The problem is, is we here in the United States in particular date from a very superficial perspective. One of the first things we do is we hyper-focus on chemistry equaling relationship success, chemistry equaling relationship success without really paying attention to do you share the same values with one another? Are you, um, are you emotionally grown up and do you have the relationship skills to handle a relationship? Do you share the same vision for your futures in life? And can your lives blend with one another? There is very little attention to given to this because we're so hyper-focused on entertaining one another in the early stages of getting to know one another without truly depend determining compatibility. And most importantly, determining emotional maturity, which is all about their character, all about their character. We have, we, we have, it's interesting because there's this whole narrative out in the YouTube universe about a high value man. A high value man makes over six figures. A high value man is respected by his peers. A high value man is over six foot tall. <laughs> there's all this, but it's not genuinely about, it's, it's his character out in the professional world, but it doesn't draw an attention to his emotional character. So when I said character, 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 I'm really talking about his emotional character, emotional character, emotional character, emotional character. See, a person can pay their bills on time. They can be on time to work. They can be professional in their, their outward lives, but it's their inner lives that matter most. And this high quality narrative, it, there's something fascinating that we assume beautiful women have character and successful men have character. That is such an ingrained supposition um, from what I've observed that it absolutely fascinates me. In fact, if a person isn't beautiful, they don't lack the value to be in relationship from a woman, for a woman's perspective. And that is so sad. There's something known as the sexual market value, that the value of a woman is based on her looks and her capacity to attract men. And there are therapists out in the YouTube universe that are touting this. 
And it saddens me because it really takes away from the most important facets of a human being is their emotional character. And we can't assume just because a woman is beautiful that she has character, nor if a man is financially successful and tall that he has character. And let me just say this, every human being is flawed. Every That's what it's called being a human being. We are flawed, fallible people. But character is how you show up towards another person. So here are just some of the factors that makes him loyal. And I'm going to share something towards the end relating back to that woman who found who I thought was in a perfect relationship. And I think there was a clue as to whether or not he could have the capacity to cheat. So number one, their actions consistently match their words. Listen, there are going to be times where you say, hey, I'm going to call you at six o'clock and something came up and you may not, that action may not, you know, resonate with or in a, a correspond, excuse me, with the words. But it's consistently someone's actions match their words. If they're inconsistent right from the get-go, I think that's a matter of respect and character for another human being. I have a dear friend of mine who lacks punctuality, and it rather began to annoy me. And I told him up front, if you are not going to be consistent in punctuality, I'm not going to spend time with you. And sure enough, he began radically punctual ever since then. And does he make mistakes every once in a while? Absolutely. But you know what? I made a request. And so just so you know, you can make requests of people all the time. And their emotional maturity will determine whether or not they stonewall you, get defensive, criticize you. Or they go, you know what? I can do what you asked. Number two, a person is generous and kind. You know, sadly, I, I witnessed so many human beings so walled up, so afraid, so protective that they've lost their ability to be generous and kind. You know, the dating marketplace is not what can I give, but what can I get from another human being? And it's sadly, women are guilty of this just like men. We have a whole host of people that expect something from another. We even have narratives. The man is supposed to climb to the highest room of the tallest tower. That's an expectation instead of meeting each other on the ground floor. <laughs> I think that's a better narrative versus the expectation because that demonstrates I want to take versus I want to give from a kind place. Number three, they commute communicate clearly without being right. They communicate clearly without being right. You know, there are going to be times you disagree with someone. First off, it's about communicating clearly what your desires and needs are. It doesn't make you right, but when you are stuck in a narrative, of, I have to be right and you're wrong. That's an egoic place to come from. It's not coming from a teamwork perspective. It's like, because I think, and it's important to listen to someone's point of view and accept that their point of view is true for them. And you have a point of view that's true for you. Being right says your point of view doesn't matter to me. Being right says your point of view is not something I honor. And if someone can't honor your point of view, they're going to be challenging to be an emotional grown up in relationship. Number four, they don't use people. They are clear about commitment. Okay, let's face it. Today in our dating marketplace, most people are so radically gun shy, men in particular, that they will say things like the following. I'm not looking for anything serious. I just want to start off as casual. And after they've had sex with you, they will say, let's take it slow. By the way, taking it slow is something you might want to consider before the penis goes inside the vagina, okay? In other words, it, you, you don't bed someone and then say, let's take it slow. You say, let's maybe get to know each other before you're physically intimate. But these men, men who... Um, Men who are not clear about desiring us, desirous of a significant relationship will oftentimes use people because they're not thinking of it from the end game perspective. They have a short-term mating strategy 
and not a long-term mating strategy. A person who has a long-term mating strategy is actually evaluating you on whether or not you're compatible with one another. Beyond the chemistry, do you share the same values? Do you have a shared life vision? Can your lives blend together? And most importantly, are you willing to do the work from an emotional grown-up perspective to navigate the challenges that we've had? Because let's face it, most everybody in midlife, okay? If you're in midlife, that's, that's my demographic. We've had multiple relationships that didn't work out. We're going to talk about this in a second. But if they didn't work out, you have to really examine why they didn't work out. And I'll get to that in a moment. Number, wait, one, two, three, four, five. They have their act together. They have emotional and physical control over their lives. They don't need to chase sex, drugs, alcohol, or partying. I think partying is detrimental to a relationship. People that drink in excess I think that numbs us. It numbs us from our capacity to really open up emotionally because it's all about the entertaining of one another to party together or they party with their friends. I was speaking to, or think about it, in excess drinking oftentimes is numbing pain. It's a substitute for real work on oneself. And so if they don't have their act together and they need emotionally or physically in their life and they need some sort of substitute, whether it's chasing sex, drugs, some people chase entertainment. They have to constantly be doing something. They're like a shark. They have to constantly, they need variety. They need variety. They need variety. They need variety. That's exhausting. And by the way, you can't keep that up for long term especially for those of us in midlife. You know, for those of us in midlife, the the days in front of us are much shorter than the days behind us. And we have to be prepared for the physical changes that we're going to have in our lives. And that abuse will affect us long-term. Number, I forgot last one, count. Next one, they have healed from their past relationships. They have healed from their past relationships. I think that's where there was a clue with that relationship I was speaking earlier that didn't make it, that perfect couple. He actually took no ownership for the endings of his last, and he had several relationships. He had two marriages and several relationships, and they were all the women's fault as to why they didn't work out. What does that say about his picking capacity if that's the case? So he hasn't done the, he didn't do the introspective work to heal from those past relationships. And he took no ownership of the past relationship. For any person who doesn't take ownership, even if it's 3%, if it's 97% the other person, it's 3% the other person, taking ownership is radically important. In fact, um, Catherine Woodward Thomas talks about this book in her book, Calling in the One. Catherine's a dear friend of mine, okay? And she talks about you individually taking ownership of your part, even if it's 3%. By the way, all the books I recommend are listed below in the Jonathan Recommend books. It takes you to, to my affiliate Amazon page. I'll just be upfront about that. Taking ownership, because guess what? If a person doesn't take ownership of their past, They're due to repeat patterns. And we always think that person's going to be the exception and not the rule. Next one. They are introspective and they work on themselves. They grow beyond their limitations, their wounds, and traumas. This piggybacks on what I've just been talking about. Folks, there's a reason why people, I've had multiple relationships, myself included, I've looked back now, I've analyzed every single relationship and asked myself, what positive things did I learn about myself in each relationship? What positive things about myself did I learn in each relationship? How have I healed from each relationship? What was good about each relationship? What am I most grateful for? Did I go through the grief process when each relationship ended? As a person who lost a child, I've learned grief in a whole new way. It's one of the reasons why, you know, he was, by the way, that's a picture, oops, that's a picture of my son, Connor. 
He's my son who passed away. I wrote a book called What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? A Journey of Personal Development, Self-Open Spiritual Work. Why? Because I also, and I didn't talk about this in the book, but I, because it's not a dating or relationship book, but what I realized is we, we must go through the grief process whenever a relationship ends because it's the death of a connection with another human being. So doing that introspective work, healing, growing past our limitations, our wounds and traumas. And by the way, I'm here to say, this is something I, I think I've said once before, there is not enough attention given to the emotional trauma of even a short-lived relationship can have on an individual. There is a deep wound that can happen. And without healing, without introspection, it's going to be difficult to carry a new relationship because we have baggage from our old relationship. Next one, men who aren't uh, protective and empathetic, meaning they care about your feelings. They want to know about your feelings. That demonstrates emotional character. And they want you to feel safe. They actually want to hear about your feelings and they want to know that you are emotionally safe. That demonstrates emotional character. If you can't express your feelings because you're afraid he's going to run away, if you have duct tape over your mouth, because you're afraid he's going to run away, then do you even have a valuable relationship at that point? Do you have a valuable relationship at that point? And this piggybacks on the last piece of the puzzle. Demonstrating trust is paramount to a man with emotional character. And trust isn't just about fidelity I talked about. Trust is your feelings matter to me. Your well-being matters to me. In other words, they put your well-being commensurate with their own well-being. They are looking for ways for you to feel safe. Emotionally grown up men, emotion, men with emotional character are very intentional about their word. It's like coming back to actions matching words, but recognizing that how you feel, your emotional safety is paramount to the relationship because your best interest is his best interest. And sadly, we human beings do such a terrible job in getting to know one another in the dating process because we're hyper-focused on entertaining one another. We don't really actually ask the deeper questions. This is why I created my private coaching program, to help you learn who you are, what you want, but more importantly, to ask those deeper questions early rather than later before you give your heart to someone, before you're physically intimate with someone. Asking those more grown-up questions before you ever get too involved with someone. If you need some support with that, there's links below to schedule a discovery call with me to see if working with the coach is right for you. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating with you? If this conversation about character, 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 and what I really mean is emotional character, emotional character, emotional character, and what I've outlined, because without it, it's gonna be very challenging for him to be loyal to you. Because, when a broken person enters in a relationship, it's most likely going to collapse. I'd like to hear your thoughts on this. Post a comment below. If this did resonate with you, please hit that like button. Please share this video. Please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you can be notified of new videos as well. And if you want to connect with me directly, there's links below to schedule a discovery call with me to see if working with a coach is right for you. There's a link to join my group called Midlife Love Mastery. There's links to get the books I recommend all listed below. Okay, I'm going to wrap up this video as I always do. First off, give myself a big gigantic Jonathan Barrick of self-love. I'm going to reach into the camera and give you a hug of love if that's okay. I'm going to ask you to turn to someone, a pet, a teddy bear, a pillow. Give either of them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love. And let's face it, we could all use more love in our lives. And lastly, my coffee mug says, swear a little, you'll feel better. On my Sunday videos, I don't swear. So that's why I'm tame on this one. Hey, wishing you a fab day. Be well. Bye now.